Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hatfield Congregational on today, the uh, Sunday of the Epiphany, the 12th day after Christmas, uh, the day when we switch from Luke's Gospel to Matthew's Gospel, the day when we switch from the shepherds and the, uh, the angels to the uh, magi and the star. So the flowers continue to be offered by all those good people who made poinsettia donations for the Christmas season. And if you haven't taken your flower yet, uh, please do so after our service today. And uh, if not, I think they go to, uh, the, to the people in, uh, in our, who are shut in, whether they be at home or in nursing homes. Uh, so if you did make a flower donation, please take care of that today. We thank Marcia Sheehan. Uh, she is the one who's doing chat and coffee for us. So everybody is welcome to go back into the uh, church hall after service for that. If anyone would like to purchase gift cards for Stop and Shop or Big Y, Linda is right there. And Linda, do you want to make that announcement that you were mentioning? That, that's great news. So, you know, you got to spend the money anyway on groceries. So if you're shopping at Big Y or Stop and Shop and you can go through uh, Linda, uh, that helps us out by the percentage. So thank you very much. That's beautiful. Great to hear. The Benevolence Committee will meet this morning at 1120, and we're talking about our Valentine's Breakfast for uh, the, the Kindness for Kids program. And so that'll be 1120 this morning. The Real Folks annual meeting is at 6 p.m. this evening. It'll be in the church parlor. Come and help plan the 2019 program. Also, there'll be the election of officers and a vote on the dispersal of the 2018 income. Refreshments will be served. And Marty's there in case anyone needs a ride. Do you want to say anything else about that meeting, Marty? Or All set? Okay. Bible study meets on Tuesday at 7 p.m., and we are still reading from Mark's Gospel. If you'd like to jump in on that conversation, uh, please join us on Tuesday. There's no quizzes. There's no prior uh, Bible experience needed, but if you want to come learn a little bit more about the Word of God, uh, come join us. The Board of Trustees meets on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And are there any other announcements from the congregation? Yes. Wow, 14 pounds? Wow. All right. So 14 pounds of aluminum tabs to the Shriners. We had a great year for the uh, stuff our stockings and over 1,000 pounds for the food donation. And that's great with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the food, um, the grocery, the grocery, uh, grocery card. So thanks to everybody who's helping out with those things. So today is the first Sunday of the month. It is Communion Sunday. We're also asking um, our church moderator, and she will be, uh, Glenda will be leading from the call to worship all the way down to our opening hymn. And also we will be, so if you want to prepare, uh, instead of our unison prayer, we will be sharing in the covenant reading. That'll be in blue hymnal number 358 if you just want to get that prepared in advance. So the prelude for this morning's worship is the brightest and the best.
So we truly have come into his house. And wherever you are on your spiritual journey trying to find this his house, you know that you are welcome here to join other fellow travelers. And I thought that was a very appropriate greeting since this is the day of Epiphany, um, the day when we talk about the Magi uh, searching long and hard to find the Christ child and then rejoicing at his presence by bringing the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so we have brought our gifts, which is our presence, and uh, hopefully we come here and we see the light of Christ in our world. And uh, so this is truly a time to continue rejoicing in that Christmas mystery that God is with us. So now I turn the microphone over to our church moderator, Glenda. Please join me in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. Arise and shine, for the light of God has come. The glory of God has shone for all the world to see. We are awakened by this great light. Praise God for delivering to us the good news of the epiphany, the heavenly announcement of Christ's birth. Lift up your eyes to see that God blesses us. Let your hearts rejoice and be radiant with hope this Epiphany Sunday. May justice water the earth like rain, and may righteousness and peace abound throughout creation. Receive again the promises of Christ's incarnation. Share in the loving mystery of God's life among us. God reveals himself to us through his son, Jesus. Our church proclaims the glory of the Christ child's life. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Amen. Amen. And now the covenant, which is found in the blue hymnal number 358, the Nicene Affirmation of Faith. Please read this with me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now please join us in singing in the red hymnal number 143, We Three Kings.
like I said, still continuing that joyous Christmas message and uh, that God is amongst us because of Christmas. Let us now share with one another the gift of peace. We could have our young people please come forward. Hey there, guys. We are still celebrating Christmas, but if you've been paying attention, we moved from the story of the shepherds to the story of the, the magi or the kings. Um, and I, the thing is, we just sang a song about we, what kind of kings? We, three kings. The problem is, Matthew is the one who tells us the story about we, three kings. He never tells us how many kings there are. We have no idea. There could have been two kings. There could have been 12 kings. We have no idea how many kings there are. The only reason that we say we, three kings is because there are three different gifts. So we just assume that each king brought one gift, but it doesn't have to be that way. So one king brings a gift of gold, another one brings a gift of frankincense, another brings a gift of myrrh, but we have no idea how many kings there are. Sometimes we just assume that we see something and we read the Bible, you know, maybe I don't know how many times, like if you're my age, you can read through that story, I don't know, maybe a hundred times, and we just automatically assume that we hear that word three. But there's no three there. So we just kind of see things that aren't necessarily there. And the other thing about seeing is when you got that story about the star way up in the sky, these magi are following the star, they say, since it's rising. And then though they come into Jerusalem, and what's the first thing they have to do? They got to go find somebody in Jerusalem. They they're looking for Jesus and they get into Jerusalem and they got to ask about who is this Messiah that we're looking for. They're following a star, but it's not like the star is so evident that it's like a spotlight shining right down on Jesus, because if it was, then everybody could have gone to Jesus. So they're following something that is obvious to them, but that no one else sees. So there's two different things today. One is, is we automatically assume three kings because of the three gifts. So we're seeing things that aren't there. The other message is the star that is there that most everybody else missed. And so there's these two different things that are going on, and it's all about trying to see Jesus around us. And sometimes you young people do this so much better than older people. You guys can see miracles all over the place and be surprised and be impressed by so many ordinary things that we take for granted. And we have to learn from you guys because there are gifts there are signs from Jesus all the time, all around us, all the time. And we just have to pay a little bit more attention to them. Um, I bet you none of you have ever seen the movie Forrest Gump, right? You've seen Forrest Gump? Thank you. Anybody else ever see Forrest Gump? All right, do you remember how Forrest Gump ends by any chance? Remember he's sending his kid off on that school bus and he's all by himself? Do you remember? Do you remember? That's the one. Yeah. Do you remember sitting on the bench? What else was there after the kid drove off on the school bus? Do you remember the butterfly? 
Okay, you don't remember the butterfly? Well, that butterfly was kind of like for him, a symbol that his wife was still with him, even though she had passed away. And so there's that message that, you know, because Forrest Gump is kind of, uh, he, he, he's an innocent person, and he sees things that everybody else maybe, or a lot of people could miss. And so that simple thing, like that little butterfly, it, it, to him, that was his wife saying hello. So that as his kid drove off, he still had her. I've talked to people, I, I remember this one story, this, this, uh, this one, uh, one guy lost his father. And his father loved moose. He, he loved those big, you know, those big, big moose that are out in the woods. And after his father died, he said he never saw a moose out in his backyard. All of a sudden, there's a moose standing out there. And all of a sudden, he said, you know, that's my dad coming back to me. So there are all kinds of ordinary ways that Jesus appears to us. And sometimes we just don't see them. So one of the messages about Christmas is trying to see just a little bit better. That's that message of light. That's that message of Jesus out there calling to us. And we've got to go try to see him and find him. So if you guys can work on that, um, you get Christmas, all right? And we appreciate the fact that you guys help us uh, to see better. So enjoy Sunday school. Learn to see even more in there. And we'll talk to you later, guys. seeing and not seeing. Anthony's over here playing with two hands and he had previously taped his other two hands so there are four hands going on right there as he's only got his two moving so that was kind of cool to watch. So now it's time for our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. 
I'd like to begin with uh, prayers for those who are unable to perform their jobs or to receive their pay uh, during our current government shutdown, um, which I think is just embarrassing, and also for those affected by the loss of those services. Also, where our prayers are for uh, Mary Sankalovich, um, who is at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. And I did see her yesterday, and uh, she's suffering from COPD. Do I have that right? COPD? And uh, so Mary um, is having a tough time breathing, and uh, this weather hasn't been helping her, uh, but she is hoping to be home soon. Also, prayers for Sue Fabru. Uh, her neighbors have told me that she's back in the hospital, uh, so we'll check in on Sue, and hopefully uh, she'll be better soon. Prayers continue for Charlie Kellogg as he continues his recovery. Prayers for Sue Gilman, um, who is undergoing treatments for her cancer. Prayers for Glenn and Denise Wagner in their times of special need and healing. Prayers for Muriel Kilbovich, uh, recovering now at home from a recent cancer operation. Prayers for Lynn Omasta um, as she is treated for her cancer. Prayers for the health of Jean Sheehan, uh, who is not able to be with us here today because of a back problem, not the cancer problem, thank God. Um, and also prayers for Johnny Benson, who is right there with us and have, glad to have him. Also, prayers for Bill Parmeter. Uh, he is coming home Wednesday from Ludlow in his rehab stint there after having a stroke, um, I think, uh, about 10 days ago. So he will be coming back to Hatfield on Wednesday. And also prayers continue for Sarah and Jimmy Pigeon and their unborn twin, girl, uh, twin girls. Are there any other prayers that you would like to offer? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so Paul with pancreatic cancer. Um, you know, in this list, how much, this is almost all cancer. Um, and it's just, I hope somewhere, somewhere, there's some kid out there who's just really smart at science and is going to figure out some answer to this because uh, this is just getting sad. Um, so our prayers are for your niece's friend Paul and all these others as well. Any other prayers that you'd like? Yes. I'm, I'm, I tear, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear all of that. I heard Maxwell. Oh, I'm sorry. So Maxwell is struggling and, and his twin brother passed. So our condolences uh, to your entire family and we, our prayers for the one that's surviving. Yes. Will do. Yes. Oh. I'm I'm sorry to hear that. He was always a, a pleasant guy to, to spend some time with. I'm sorry to hear that. Any other prayers? No. Okay. Um, then let us take a, a moment, um, you know, still in the season of Christmas joy uh, that Jesus is with us, uh, to remember all of these people who are in need, um, all these people that have passed on to the other world. And uh, let us keep in mind also that that whole message of Matthew that we're going to be sharing a little bit later about the Epiphany is that Jesus comes into a mean world. The darkness remains, but his light is still there. Uh, doesn't make the darkness disappear, but the more brightness that we can spread of Jesus, the darkness gets pushed farther away. Uh, let us keep that in mind as we just spend a few moments in silent prayer.
God who abides in the heavens, whose guidance is always available to those who look up and see the Creator in all majesty of the skies, break through the limits of our thoughts and our imaginations and our vision, and call us to come closer to Jesus, just as you called the Magi through the brightness of the Bethlehem star of long ago. Reveal to us the joy and hope that Jesus' birth brings to all of creation, so that we may worship wholeheartedly in that same spirit of spiritual discovery of your revelation to us. Let us know that our prayers are the ongoing conversation between God in heaven and us on earth. And now let us continue with that prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are stewards of God's grace, entrusted with the wondrous richness of Jesus' birth amongst us as one of us, announced to all the world on that epiphany day so long ago. As the Magi brought their gifts to the Christ child, so we are asked at this time to bring what we can also offer to Christ through our donations to him and his church. This is not only an opportunity to give, but one to show our devotion to God's Savior sent to all the people of the world. My Lord, we ask you to accept these gifts now offered through the generosity of these good people to you and to the work that we try to continue to do in your name. The Magi came bringing their rich gifts to the Christ child. We bring our gifts to that same Christ child, the same presence among us that it's been ever since Christmas. May we never forget, even as we close out the Christmas season, that because of Jesus' birth, he knows us in our good times, in our sad, in our trials, and our triumphs. May these gifts help us to share that message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. 
Since we still are in that Christmas season, let us now join together in singing from Red Hymnal number 144, What Star Is This? And our gospel reading for this morning is the story of the Epiphany from Matthew. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? 
for we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, In you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I also may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country, but by another road. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So we were driving out to Boston one day, and we often take the Mass Pike exit that is the Copley Prudential exit. And if you've ever taken that exit, you know that the off-ramp tunnel leads you up beneath the city, and it turns this way and that way in relative darkness. And you have to be a bit careful because half of the traffic, obviously, is heading to Prudential. Half the traffic is obviously heading off to the Copley. And most of them know exactly where they are speeding off to. If you only go out there on occasion like I do, well, then you have to pay extra close attention because if you're kind of wondering where to go, these other Bostonians, they'll drive right over the top of you without even a blink of an eye. So I exit the Mass Pike, I enter the darkness of the tunnel, and it seems just a little bit more confusing and just a little bit darker than usual. So after struggling for a bit, genius that I am, that's when I realize I'm still wearing sunglasses in the tunnel. It had been a sunny day heading out from the west to the east into the sun. I got sunglasses on. I hit the tunnel and all of a sudden it's just dark, but I got used to the sunglasses, to the dullness of the sunglasses, and I could have killed both Sharon and I. It was really dark in there, but it was unnecessarily dark with sunglasses still on. So today is Epiphany a day in which we celebrate a light in the darkness, like taking off our sunglasses in the tunnel so we can see better in the darkness that is still there as we are on our way, our journey, trying to follow the light, trying to see the light, trying to seek out the light. We ended our reading this morning from Matthew's Gospel as the Magi are heading back to their homes without returning to King Herod as they had been told to do. The next few verses that we didn't read, they're going to go on and tell us that Herod gets really ticked off at these guys. Herod wanted to know who this newborn king of the Jews was. He told the Magi it was so that he could go and pay him homage as well. But Herod's not that kind of a guy. He wants to kill off this threat, this newborn king of the Jews, so that he can remain the king of the Jews. So when the Magi duped him, Herod acted as almost any tyrant would. He couldn't find the exact baby boy who was the newborn king of the Jews. So instead, Bethlehem's not a huge village. There's not a lot of baby boys there. So he tells his soldiers, go to Bethlehem and kill them all. Now that's a horrible tragedy. And, you know, for as horrible as it is, it's not one that really surprises us. Whether it be now, a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, or back at the time of Herod. You know, even now, in our news, we hear of a crown prince, a guy who's got everything. He's got wealth, he's got power, he can have anything he wants in the world. He is one of our allies, and he ordered the murder of one of his own citizens because that citizen dared to call him to task, and he then ordered his body to be, well, he ordered him killed in his own embassy in Turkey. Then they ordered his soldiers to dismember that body and to carry the body parts out in a suitcase, and now, that same guy has got the audacity to charge the ones that are following his orders. 
with a capital offense. So the ones who murdered this guy on this other guy's orders, they may end up dying, but the crown prince stands back. You know, it's not me, I'm the crown prince. So we're not really surprised by tyrants. We've grown sadly accustomed to their ways. A lot of rulers couldn't care less about the people they govern. The people they govern are disposable. So just like the angel's announcement to the common shepherds tells us that Jesus was born for all people, no matter who you are, so this story tells us that Jesus is born into the commonness of our world. And that commonness can often be brutal. Jesus was not immune from life's cruelties from the very moment he came into the world. And again, we hear how much Jesus is just like us. He wasn't in some kind of a protective bubble that all these things were happening around him. Jesus was immersed in the reality of our world, the cruelty of our world. The light came into the world, but the darkness remained. We still got those sunglasses on. We need to take off the sunglasses and see the light better. And there's one detail that makes an important point in today's epiphany story that can easily be overlooked. Herod orders his soldiers to murder all the baby boys in Bethlehem who are two years old and younger, based on, as the Bible says, the time that he had learned from the Magi. They had told this miserable old king that they began to follow the star at its rising. This means that the Magi were following the light of the Bethlehem star, according to the story, for two years. It wasn't only a 12-day journey like from Christmas to Epiphany on our calendar. Not just 12 days, two years. They were tracking the star for two years, wondering who knows where. They go to Jerusalem because they're looking for Bethlehem, but they go to Jerusalem instead because they're searching, they're asking questions. This is a story of dogged perseverance. Who knows where they were for two years looking for that Christ child? The star, the star in this story. You know, it couldn't have been like a helicopter searchlight, you know, beaming down right on the house of Jesus. Because if it were that simple, well, then the magic could have gone directly there. Plus, also, Herod and his soldiers could have gone directly there. Instead, it's this idea of a message in creation, a message sent to all the world. And we have to be open to hear it, to see it, to feel it. So the magi traveled. They searched. They wandered. And they wondered, who is this cause? For that light in the sky. So Matthew is telling us a story of not only seeking, but of struggle. This has something to say about Christ in our world, which is the whole point of Epiphany. It is the revelation of Jesus' birth, not only to his own people, which is the story of Luke, but to the, the revelation to everybody. And it's not only in what we would call our Holy Scripture. It's not only the words that other people read about God. It's something out there in all of creation that calls people to this message of God amongst us. So it's not only for the ones who are called, the holy ones. It's not only for the ones who are out there looking for God. It's always around us, but we have to be open to it. Wonderly read for us the prophecy about the coming of the Messiah from the book of Isaiah. And that story is the basis for our gospel story of the Magi. The people of God were living in exile at the time of Isaiah, and there was this dawning little ray of hope that they would be able to return very soon to their homeland. To these people, God sends his prophet with a message of realistic encouragement. Darkness will still cover the earth, and thick darkness will still cover the peoples. But, says the Lord, well, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear to you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The light is there, but so is the darkness. Matthew's detail of the two-year search is the early believers coming to terms with the reality that this world can be a dark and discouraging place, and still telling us that we can still see the light if we go looking for it, if we take off the sunglasses that the world puts on us and we look for the light, which is the message I tried to share with the children and the message that they share with us, that they can see wonder where we don't. God is always around us, not just in beautiful buildings, not just in holy books. God is all around us if we take off the sunglasses and look. 
So that's that two-year search, that early believer coming to terms as we have to, as we shared all of those prayers of how troubling this life can be, how sad it can be, how cruel and unfair it can be. There's darkness everywhere. We have to struggle to see the light. So Matthew knows that the light has come, but he also knows that darkness covers the earth. And Jesus knows the same thing. Jesus is no fairy tale. Jesus is born into our world and almost immediately he has to run away from a tyrant's killing spree. You may have heard from Wonderly that the, the kings are bringing to, uh, bringing to the Holy Land. They're bringing gifts of gold and frankincense. There's no myrrh there, the burial spice. Matthew adds that because he knows that Jesus is going to escape Herod, but he's not going to escape Caesar, and that's going to be waiting for that holy child. So it can be dark in the world, but the amazing truth shared on Epiphany is that even in spite of the darkness, the light has come. I don't know if we really appreciate how blessed we are that we have the hope of that light. You know, some people may think it's a fairy tale, some people may think we're idealistic, but if I didn't have the hope of that light, all of this darkness that is always in the news, always in our stories, always in our lives, it would overwhelm me. I thank God every day for that gift of hope. And that gift of hope is the story of Epiphany, that the darkness is there, but so is the light. So let us take off the sunglasses that the world would force on us to not be able to see this glorious wonder all around us. And let us see like a child sees. Let us see in the innocence that God is truly around us. Even when things are terrible, the light is still there. And now let's help our light to shine even brighter by gathering around the communion table as part of today's Epiphany celebration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in your bulletins, there should be an insert for the communion prayers. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. The Gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, and the same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Women and men, youth and children, gather around Christ's table. For this table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God the Most High. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day, when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and of love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the good news, Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the light and life of your grace, to suffer on the cross for us, to be raised from death, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church among us. With your daughters and sons of faith in all times and all places, we praise you with joy. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. O oh God Most High, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> we remember that in the night of his betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the bread. <clears throat> in the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. You do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Minister unto you in Christ's name, I share with you the cup. We now join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood who may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Now let us go on our way with the sending hymn from Blue Hymnal number 436, Shalom, Peace to You Now.
Well, again, thank you for coming and joining us to get today at Hatfield Congregational as we celebrate the Epiphany, um, and which brings technically to a close our Christmas celebration. Um, I know there's an awful lot of people out there sick with that evil stomach bug. Um, I hope all of you here, if you haven't had it, you stay well. Um, hopefully your families that it all gets out of that house and we all get back to health again. Um, but now as we go on our way, let us turn back to our bulletin for our benediction response. Christ sends us on our way as a bold and confident people. Look up and be guided by the star of joy. God's purposes revealed in Jesus' birth are to be lived out by us as people of faith. The glory of Christ has shown among us. We are blessed beyond deserving. What we have received, we are now asked to pass along with joy so that Jesus' epiphany may be shared throughout all the world. So, as we leave this sanctuary, let us act in Christ's power to minister to all people. <laughs>